So when Samsung announced the brand new Galaxy Watch Ultra and the Watch 7, they devoted like two to three minutes of their keynote session, their massive keynote session announcing all sorts of devices to a feature called Cycling FTP Prediction or Estimation. And the kicker would, they would do this within four minutes of riding, just four minutes of riding along and you get your FTP predicted. Now about now, a bunch of you are like, what the heck is an FTP? FTP stands for the Functional Threshold Power, or basically, roughly speaking, the maximum power, cycling power, that you can output while riding a bike for roughly an hour. Uh, now, nitpickers corner there, there's a whole lot of like nuance around the term hour uh, and the term roughly before that. Even like the inventor of this thing in the last few years has kind of backed away from those two terms. So we're just gonna have to go with the roughly an hour thing with roughly not actually being defined because <laughs> Welcome to cycling technology. Uh, so the idea here is that normally in order to get this data, you have to do one of four basic tests. Uh, one being you just go balls to the wall for an hour. But that's really difficult because there's all sorts of things in the way like traffic and cars and stoplights and whatever the case is, even just downhills, and that would reduce your overall power average. So most people don't tend to do that. So instead, most people tend to do a couple different tests. Uh, some of those tests are like 20 minute intervals. Some of them are eight minute intervals. And there's variations of that depending on which company and algorithm you wanna believe. The next test is called a ramp test where essentially on a smart trainer, or typically a smart trainer, uh, it'll keep on increasing the power over the course of roughly about 20 minutes until you can't move your legs anymore. Uh, and then in the case of both of those two previous tests, it takes a percentage of that because you can obviously hold a higher power for eight or 20 minutes than you can for an hour. And then the last option that most cyclists actually use today is just automatic FTP prediction based on your normal day-to-day -day riding. Uh, computers and algorithms can look at those normal rides today and figure out what intensity you're doing based on your heart rate and other factors and kind of give a rough estimate of your FTP. And in my experience over the last few years, most of those computers are actually pretty good at getting close to the ballpark of FTP. And now keep in mind that despite all the cycling lore around FTP and like bigger is better and all this kind of stuff, and that's true to a degree, the reality is FTP is just one component of whether or not you're a good cyclist. Uh, a sprinter winning a Tour de France stage sprinting on the line there doesn't give a rat's ass about FTP. They just wanna know what their maximum power they can throw up for those couple seconds. Inversely, someone doing an ultra race that's gonna go for two or three days, FTP doesn't really matter there either because that's about the hour versus going for two or three days. In a cycling, people typically specialize at different ends of those two extremes. And hey, just a quick note, if you are finding this entertaining or informative or something, definitely hit subscribe because I got my full end up reviews of both of these things coming out and the Samsung Ring and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's definitely uh, gonna be interesting around here. But Samsung said they can do this, so let's, let's do this. And hold on for this ride, because let me tell you, this is a ride. So I got my watch, this is the Galaxy Ultra watch that I bought, uh, I bought all this stuff here, uh, and I basically tried to figure out how to first pair a power meter. In the keynote, they noted a power meter was required. No problems, I got power meters up the wazoo here. So what are the watch, try to pair a power meter? Couldn't figure out how to do that, let alone how to find anything about an FTP test. So I went back to the keynote, something that of course every consumer would do. And in the keynote, on the slide where it has basically the white background with the white text, you know, the totally readable text, it mentions using the Samsung phone app with the Samsung health app on the Samsung phone to go ahead and do something about the FTP test. So I went into accessories there and found like a pair of power meters there. Uh, so you have to scan for a power meter. By the way, fun fact, you also have to be within cellular coverage. If you are not within cellular range for any reason, you can't actually scan for a power meter, which is bonkers. Uh, but anyways, you scan for the power meter, you pair it, and then now you have that set. And now I tried to find the FTP test and that, that doesn't exist either. So I'm like, well, let me just go for a ride and see what happens. And since I'm going for a ride, I'm gonna go all out. And the reason I went all out is because Samsung provided no information on this. And so I thought, if they're going to estimate FTP, typically it's an all out sort of effort. So I decided to go all out. I went out there, I got ready to go and it, it wouldn't find my power meter again. Uh, I futzed with it for like 30 minutes of trying to get this to work and eventually got it to repair to the power meter. I'm gonna save you like hours of troubleshooting here over the course of multiple days. This whole thing is a giant dumpster fire, but nonetheless, I'm ready to roll. So I've got a straightaway along the Olympic rowing basin here and off I went. Basically balls to the wall, minus going around some geese and people and stuff like that throwing the way. 
That's just reality, but we'll get back to that in just a second. And so I went about four and a half minutes just to give a little bit extra buffer for some of the geese and stuff like that. And I then hit stop on the app. Uh, by the way, uh, this is totally app driven. It'll use the heart rate from your watch, but don't press start on the watch because that then actually stop the app and vice versa. Again, complete dumpster fire, but press stop on the phone app and it'll immediately show your FTP. In this case, it showed an FTP of 272 watts, which to be fair, was not a, oh, it's already given up. I hear you, bud, I hear you. Which to be fair, was not super inaccurate. And here's why. Normally, most applications and tests and things like that put my FTP floating between 290 watts and 310 watts. Uh, right now, Exert puts at 308 watts, Garmin about 308, 309 watts, Train Road in the same ballpark, and so on. So all in that range. But on this day that I did this test, I had gone out for a two plus hour ride of like a photo shoot. I then done a 30 minute hard interval run. I then did a 15 minute power meter test for something unrelated. So by the time I got to the Samsung test for this portion of the day, I'd say my legs are probably closer to 280 to 294 in FTP if I was to do a test at that point in time, right? So 272 is pretty darn close for like a four minute throwaway test. So I'm like with geese and people involved. So I thought to myself, huh, that's interesting for two reasons. One, that's actually impressively accurate. Two, back on that funky small text on that Samsung slide, it said that you had to have an overnight sleep the night before and that Samsung's health AI energy thingamajig would somehow get involved and make this better. Fun fact, that night I had not slept with this watch yet. I had slept with other Samsung watches in the past, but not that night before or any other time recently for that matter. So that was quirky. Thus, I went to sleep with the watch and decided to try it again the next morning. So I got my sleep in, I then got out there, I got ready to go, and of course it couldn't find my power meter again. Like I had all the bike computers in the world finding this power meter, no problem, and, and this one couldn't. I fussed with it for another 15 or 20 minutes, reconnect, disconnect, remove, add, blah, 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 and finally I got it connected again for my next test. Uh, this time it was a bit of a, a quieter time out there, so I went balls to the wall again. Uh, and this time it bumped up the test to 279, or basically 280 watts, uh, which again, I think is pretty reasonable for the moment. Uh, I am not feeling this being a strong week right now. I've had a very busy, kind of tiring week, both athletically and otherwise. And so I actually think that the 280 to 290 is probably my current FTP for this week, given all the busyness going on. So I'm reasonably impressed with it being in the ballpark there. But don't, don't get too excited yet. No, 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 no. Uh, so then I thought to myself, in Samsung's app, uh, when they explain this little thing, there's one bit of text where they said you could do a medium to hard ride, not a balls to the wall ride, a medium to hard ride, and get the same numbers. So I went out then and decided to do a 40 minute medium to hard ride with one like Strava segment tossed in for good measure. And then I basically did the whole dance again, the power meter failed again, blah, blah, blah. And finally started my ride and off I went. I rode for 40 minutes and just like this box here, after two minutes, it gave up. The power meter disconnected at some point. The watch and the phone became disconnected because the watch is tracking heart rate, yet the phone is tracking your power and something between these two is tracking GPS, but it's not clear because this was blinking and this says confirmed. And I, I don't know, it did eventually pull my heart rate data into this file on my phone, but the power data is lost. And at this point, like, I'm gonna keep on doing lots of other tests for accuracy of the optical heart rate on this and the sad panda here as well. Um, and we're gonna get to that because that's, that's some interesting stuff coming down that pipeline. So I'm already digging into all that. But as far as cycling power, it's you know that quote, the destination, it's about the journey, not the destination, right? That whole thing there. That's like when you play the Oregon Trail game and you get dysentery and your entire family dies along the way. That's basically getting the Samsung FTP estimate. Uh, yes, you may get a relatively accurate estimate at the end of it, but it is such a nightmare to get there. And by the way, the real kicker for all this, Samsung doesn't save the power data to the files. Uh, it shows up in Samsung Health, doesn't send that data to Strava. My Strava file for all these attempts has had zero power data in it whatsoever. Why, why, why Samsung? You, you did all this work to do something here, yet all the things that matter to cyclists, like having it be in the watch itself, having the file actually record the power data, like why did you spend all this time on this in the keynote and have it be so horrifically bad? Um, despite getting the answer like 
theoretically right, right? Again, the Oregon Trail. Killed the whole family, dysentery, the whole bit. You got to the end of the trail, you, with the right number, but everything else was a complete disaster. So yeah, hopefully accuracy is better. With that, stay tuned for plenty more on optical heart rate sensor accuracy and GPS accuracy and sleep accuracy. I've got lots of tests I'm doing. I'm not just gonna do like a one day review of this or something like that. Also stay tuned for the Galaxy Ring as well. I'll be doing deep dive into accuracy on that. So definitely whack the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of this goodness. Uh, it's entertaining one way or another, right? With that, have a good one.